Australia, despite facing economic challenges and relying heavily on industries like housing speculation and natural resource exports, continues to thrive while other countries with similar issues struggle. Why? In this exploration of Australia's economic success, we'll delve into the unique factors that set Australia apart, from its dependence on basic resources to the role of housing speculation and the influx of immigrants. So, as we said, Australia has a lot of money, and its economy is doing better than most other places. Even though many countries face problems like high prices, lots of people without jobs and big money troubles, Australia has avoided these issues for more than 30 years. Australia's economic success is confusing to experts because it has a lot of money and success, like developed countries, but also has industries that are more common in developing countries. A big part of Australia's money comes from industries like selling goods in bulk and houses, including one that can be unpredictable and change a lot based on what's happening in the world. Also, Australia relies a lot on coal, a kind of fuel that's running out, and this raises concerns about taking care of the environment. On top of these challenges, Australia depends a lot on one country to trade with, China, which buys more than 40% of Australia's exports. Even though Australia has plenty of natural resources, selling them without processing them first creates a problem. While it makes a lot of money for the companies that extract these resources, it doesn't create many jobs locally. In theory, Australia, with its many natural resources and small population, could do really well. But the practical side of relying on selling raw materials without turning them into products raises concerns and worries about whether this way of making money can last for a long time. In short, Australia faces a challenge in turning its abundant natural resources into real economic benefits for its people. While exports like dirt or coal contribute to economic output figures, they don't necessarily benefit the regular participants in the economy. Most mining operations in Australia are located far from major cities, employing a small workforce of fly-in, fly-out workers who have their needs provided for by the mining companies. This setup effectively isolates the lucrative mining industry from interacting with the broader economy. In contrast, industries like finance or technology in other parts of the world contribute to the local economy as employees spend money on various goods and services. However, the remoteness of mining centers in Australia makes it challenging for workers to circulate their money locally. To address this, one solution could be to reinvest the revenues from mining back into the domestic economy through taxation. Norway provides a successful example of this approach, heavily taxing natural resource revenues and managing a sovereign wealth fund that benefits the nation. Although Australia has a sovereign wealth fund, the Future Fund, it lacks direct revenues from natural resources and is significantly smaller than Norway's fund. The Australian government's failure to impose direct taxes on mining means that much of the wealth generated benefits a few wealthy individuals or international companies without directly contributing to the nation's well-being. In simple terms, foreign money transfers don't show up in a country's economic output figure, so a nation could be losing money without economists realizing it just by looking at GDP. Other industries like tech and finance have their issues, such as significant income inequality, and the same happens in Australia with mining. Fly-in, fly-out workers in mining are well-paid and can outcompete regular workers for things like housing, contributing to a major problem in the Australian economy. Despite having a lot of land and a small population, housing in Australia is extremely expensive. This seems odd because the price of housing, like any other product, is influenced by supply and demand. On the supply side, Australia is vast but mostly uninhabited desert. Most people live near the coast in a few dense cities like Sydney and Melbourne, which rank high in unaffordability. Sydney, the most expensive city in Australia, is geographically constrained, surrounded by mountains and the ocean, limiting available land. Australians also prefer large houses, reducing the supply of available land further. Urban sprawl has led people to live farther from city centers, increasing commute times. The building industry has grown, but apartments face issues due to poor building standards driven by profit-seeking developers. On the demand side, Australians have high incomes, with the world's highest minimum wage after accounting for exchange rates. Tax policies support home buying, excluding certain taxes on home profits, and encouraging investment in housing as people can write off expenses against income, a unique feature in Australia.
This means expenses on holding an asset not only reduce the income from that asset, but also any income, including income from a job. In Australia, individuals earning $100,000 from a job and $20,000 from an investment property can reduce taxable income to $70,000 by claiming $50,000 in paper expenses for the property. Despite a high income tax rate, reaching 45% for earnings over $115,000 US dollars or $180,000 Australian dollars, many people employ strategies like home ownership, paper-based financial losses, and lower tax rate practices to minimize tax payments. The tax advantages of home ownership in Australia have turned homes into investments rather than just places to live. Unfortunately, this focus on housing has come at the expense of investment in other areas like technical innovation, causing Australia to lag behind other advanced economies, particularly the USA. Despite this, housing has contributed to the economy by employing skilled workers in construction and infrastructure development. Australia's strong economy is fueled by abundant natural resources and a focus on housing speculation. Despite facing similar challenges as other nations, Australia's economic success is attributed to its political stability, high standard of living, favorable weather, cultural diversity, and English language accessibility. The country's top-notch education system from universities to certain high schools has become a valuable export, attracting wealthy individuals seeking quality education for their children and contributing to overall prosperity. The movement of young and educated people around the world is really important for the global economy, which relies a lot on smart and skilled individuals. When students from other countries come to study in a place, it's like a perfect opportunity for that place to make money. These students spend money on things like goods and housing, which helps the local economy. The fees they pay to universities also support jobs and research, which is good for the economy. After they finish studying, if these students stay and work in the country, it continues to benefit the economy because they pay taxes and contribute to their jobs. In Australia, this isn't just about students contributing economically. Many smart and wealthy people decide to live there because it's a great place to live, even though it can be expensive. Australia actively encourages these people to move there as long as they have useful skills, lots of money, or are willing to do jobs that locals might not want to do. This has worked out well for Australia, making it one of the best places to live, and they plan to bring in even more people over the next few years. But this success also has some challenges. While it's good for the overall economy, not everyone benefits equally. Australia's economy has grown, but not when you look at it on a per-person basis. The focus on bringing in wealthy and skilled people has made some people very rich, especially those who own houses in or near big cities. But for young Australians who haven't already become rich, it's hard for them to afford things like houses in the expensive cities, and they don't get the same tax benefits as property owners. This makes it tough for them to have a good quality of life. The problem of houses being too expensive isn't just in Australia, but the unique situation there serves as a warning for other developed countries. Australia's in a tough spot now. If they slow down on bringing in more people, it could hurt the wealth of the country. But if they keep bringing in more people without developing other important industries, it might be hard for young people to have a good life. So Australia is kind of a cautionary example for other developed countries facing similar issues. Hey, that's it for now. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel to stay updated and let us know your thoughts. And we'll see you next time. See you next time.